Hi, welcome to Ashley Watches. Today's video is about this software for doing depth maps of um, macro photography. It's called Helicon Soft, that's the company, and basically it does what's called focus stacking. So this video is not an advertisement for it or anything. It's just that I used it and I thought it'd be fun to show people. Um, and so I'll show you how I used it. And it's free for 30 days and it's not particularly expensive even if you buy it. But basically with a, with a microscope like this or a, a rig with a still camera, you can take a series of pictures with very slightly different focus and um, process them with this software and it'll it'll figure out what f the different focuses correspond to depth and it'll create a 3d image so in this this example I shot the um, but I, I, I was interested in this for the GG watch to compare the impressions left by the gold stamp. So in particular, there's a stamp here that says 750. And there's a similar stamp on the buckle and the free ring. So I did a comparison of the three of those using this software. So what you do, you can either do a video, you can just turn on video recording and just do a, a very slow focus pull and then process the video frames into stills and load them into the software or you can take individual stills if you have a still camera. I think I did this with video because it has like 300, yeah. So you can see this is kind of the top, it's already out, it's out of focus and then somewhere in the middle it's kind of in focus and at the, at the end it's out of focus at the opposite extreme. So that's just this, the stack of images. And then if I hit render, you see it kind of processing and building the depth image. And this is a feature that's built into the um, Hyrox microscopes. I'll put a link to that. Um, the, the Hyrox microscopes have this software built in, but this is uh, something you could do on your own with an inexpensive microscope. And the results of this experiment for me was that I could see that two of the stamps, the stamp in the case of the GG and the stamp in the um, free ring were made with the same punch, whereas the stamp, the 750 stamp on the buckle was made with a different punch. And I thought that was interesting because it suggests something about the manufacturing process. And which one, you know, the, the free ring and the and the case were stamped by the same at the same desk or by the same at the same table or same facility. And the buckle might have been stamped at a completely different facility that makes buckles, for example. You can see here, this is still processing, but what what you'll notice is that there are some unique features because of the, the stamp itself. So the seven has like a chip in the in the in the tip of the seven, the five has a couple chips in the top of it, and the and the O has um, a big big chip or whatever. So this is actually elevated compared to the bottom of this O here. And then that's that's what we'll see in the um, the the same uh, stamp on the free ring. So when this is done, I think it's just about done. While it's while it's doing that, I'll show you this. I got this cool binocular loop made by Zeiss. So it's a Carl Zeiss. Um, basically, what this does, if you use something like this, I think it's done now. If you use this kind of loop, it's it's binocular, 
Um, but it, it doesn't solve the parallax problem. Your, your eyes are still really far apart. So when you get really close to something, it, it causes eye strain and it's hard to focus. So this solves that problem by bringing both points of view very close together. So you wear it like this. Unfortunately, I can't see you. I can't tell you or show you what I see through here. But it's great. I, I really like stereo for looking at things with a loop. Um, okay, so that's done. So now you can see one of the effects of focus stacking is you get a completely in focus image because it's using the focused part of everything. And then the other aspect of it is you can um, look at it in 3D. So you go to File, Export, 3D Model, and it opens up in the other software that comes with this Helicon Focus. I don't know why it opened on the other monitor there. And it's inverted. It's, it's look, so it, I think it can't easily tell if it's inverted or not. So it has like a checkbox for inverting. So I uninverted it. Oh, wait, maybe it's, yeah. So if I do reload, invert, and you can, you, there's some, this looks pretty good. Basically, it just tricks your eye into, it's not a perfect 3D model, but it has enough depth that it can, it, it, it can allow you to look at it and just determine what's higher and what's lower. So that when you see the, that with the texture reapplied to the 3D as it is here, you can see what's raised and what's um, pressed in. So you can see that this anomaly in the top of the zero is, is a protrusion as opposed to a deeper uh, stamp or punch. And then if you turn off the smoothing, you start to see all the errors. And if you smooth it too much, it becomes flat. And then there's also an amplifier so you can stretch it to an unnatural amount. Let me just show you that. But the problem is, see that the top surface is also, all the error in the top surface is amplified. But it's kind of cool. I think you can turn off the texture and then just shows as a depth map here. And you can also um, export this as a 3D model. So that's that. I think I put some finished shots in here. Free ring. Yeah, so this is just a, 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 a focused version of the three ring stamp without the 3D. And then um, this is the, the case itself. And even without 3D, you can see 
can see the same chips in the seven. There's like a chip here, same there. And then in the five, you've got these, this one that's like two thirds the length and one third the length. And here you have two thirds and one third. And then here you have this ch big chip, which in the case of the free ring, it, it, it mean it, it resulted in the stamp not even going all the way in. So you can see that those two are the same. And then the buckle, is just completely different. Um, and then I think I have, I, I made a quick movie of, what's that? Oh, this is the movie I captured. Okay, yeah, so this is how I captured it. So I just, this was just a, using the microscope's ability to Film. I just filmed a, a focus pull to get the data to do the uh, depth map. And then I converted that to stills. And since it was a, a, a long movie, it's 300 stills or whatever. That's one of them. So I think... This video is already 12 minutes long. I think it, this is something that you can um, you can experiment with yourself if, if you're interested in it. And um, if you have if you happen to have any gold omega case that has a 750 stamp in it or a, a 18 karat gold buckle from omega that has an 18 karat stamp in it i'd love to um compare i'd love to help you do the the depth image of it to compare and see if we can figure out if if there's if either of the things that i have were stamped in a, a facility that made other Omega parts, cases or buckles. So this, I don't know if this is gonna, I guess you can see. Um, this is like a rig I made just to do the same thing with a still camera if you don't have a microscope. And um, Basically, this is this is a slider that's designed for macro anyway. So you, um, it's got a lock feature. So you can do very precise changes in focus here, and then take a picture each time. And. Something else I did here that just show you for fun. This is a micrometer that this was a one the the seller kind of sent it to me not packaged well and broke it. So the it's like a half a millimeter on this side and one millimeter on this side, which is not ideal. It still works, but it also on my rig here. You can just pull the micrometer part of it out and stick it in here. Start at zero. Lower the camera to it. And then you can use the micrometer to actually adjust the distance the camera is for each image. And then all these other sliding things allow you to get into the zone, you know, in terms of focusing on the piece, putting the piece here, getting everything set properly with these larger adjustments, and then doing really fine focus with the remote micrometer. Um, 
And that, but that's not really necessary. I would say the minimum thing that's necessary is just to shoot like 4K video if you have the ability and just do a very slow focus pull. So you need a close-up with a microscope or a close-up lens video, very slow focus pull. And then the other thing, I wasn't sure if like the, for the software to work, if everything had to be perfectly incremental. So when I first started, exp when I first started experimenting with the microscope, I mean, with that setup with the still camera, I was going exactly like, uh, I don't know, like the same increment with each each time I refocused, like exactly the same increment because I thought the software might need that. But it seems like the software doesn't need that. It can it works just from having a stack of reg of images that have been that there's a focus shift through those images, even if it's done manually while you're shooting video and it's not consistent it's still going to give you enough enough depth um, in the final render to for you to be able to perceive the depth of what you're looking at. And um, that's it. I hope you enjoyed that. And um, I'm going to hopefully get back to doing some watchmaking now. But um, these other things have distracted me. All right. Thanks again for watching.